it sounds absolutely ridiculous. And every time I talk about icing the testicles, I grin and giggle a little bit, but it does work. And I've seen it on my blood work. I saw it on Lucas Owen's blood work results. And I've seen it on some of you guys' blood work results that you send it in over the last couple of weeks or some anecdotal evidence that you felt an overall increase of well-being and that libido improved after uh, joining in on this experiment. So overall, my results, Lucas' results, and some of you guys' results all show a lot of positive changes. Vigorous Steve here with blood work results after seven weeks of icing my testicles for 20 minutes, three times per day. And I did that in an attempt to raise testosterone concentrations and improve fertility further. But it's a little bit early to determine if fertility improved because it takes about 90 days for semen to mature and be ready for ejaculation. But it's only been seven weeks. So I would need to wait another seven weeks approximately to do another semen analysis and see if my uh, fertility and overall semen quality improved or not. I did a baseline reading seven weeks ago, which was about, I think, three and a half months after finishing my post-cycle therapy. And there, everything fell within normal parameters. So still, it's not, uh, you know, a top of the reference range <laughs> and all the semen analysis markers, but it's certainly a lot better than my semen analysis, which I performed on cycle. But even then, I still had good uh, semen count. So I'd have 20, 23 million sperm per milliliter in my overall ejaculate. So that improved since then quite significantly. And I was wondering to see if icing the testicles for 20 minutes, three times per day, would improve my semen quality and my fertility levels even further. But for that, we'll have to wait another seven weeks. So in this video, we're just going to discuss if icing the testicles was able to raise my total testosterone, free testosterone, and my overall hormone profile. And it certainly did. So let's get right into the blood work, starting with a little bit of a back story. I did a post cycle therapy. I recovered just fine. My total testosterone ended up at 515 nanograms per deciliter, but my non alcoholic fatty liver disease was not resolved at that time. So I decided to do a fasting mimicking diet. Four weeks into the fasting mimicking diet, eating vegetables only approximately 500 calories per day. My total testosterone declined to about 375 nanograms per deciliter. And at that point, I talked, uh, I think it was about a week pre previously, I discussed with Lucas Owen of the Boost Your Biology podcast. He mentioned to me icing the testicles was actually quite beneficial in his scenario. He never run a cycle in his life, but he was able to raise his total testosterone concentrations with about 20%. So after discussing the protocol with Lucas Owen a little bit more in depth and seeing his before and after blood work results and doing a little bit more research about its potential to improve fertility, I decided to get a baseline reading, do my own semen analysis to see where I was at. Again, fertility at that point was actually quite good, but I wanted to see if I could improve that a little bit further. My testosterone was 375 nanograms per deciliter after four weeks on the fasting mimicking diet. And then two weeks later, after incorporating the icing your testicles protocol, 20 minutes, three times per day, my testosterone was pretty much the same, 388 nanograms per deciliter. But I mostly suspect that it didn't improve because I was still doing the fasting mimicking diet. I continued that for another two weeks because I wanted to resolve the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So six weeks of the fasting mimicking diet, my non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was pretty much resolved. Liver enzymes came back into acceptable ranges, bottom of the reference range, around 10 to 20 units per liter. I did an ultrasound. 50% of the specialists said that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was resolved, and two other specialists said that there were still trace amounts of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease left. But considering that my triglycerides, liver enzymes, and ferritin were back within the reference ranges, uh, they, would, you know, they also confirmed that I was pretty much good to go. So I increased my calories again, reintroduced the carbs, the proteins, and the fats. Because again, during the fasting mimicking diet, I wasn't really eating that much. 500 calories of vegetables is a uh, kind of peanuts, you know? That's why I ended up at 85 and a half kgs. So slowly increased the calories, um, ended up in a caloric surplus again. I don't think I was eating the same amount. I'm, I don't think I'm eating the same amount now 
as I was uh, at the end of my pulse cycle therapy, where my testosterone was 515 nanograms per deciliter, or overlay my current diet, I think it's about 2,500 calories per day. I'm still, I'm still trying to build up my metabolic rate and slowly improve my strength and stamina and, you know, uh, training capacity. But my testosterone, in the meantime, after slowly increasing the calories, came from 388 nanograms per deciliter, or let's say, you know, before I started icing the testicles at 375 nanograms per deciliter, my testosterone came back up to 627.39 nanograms per deciliter. Now, it's a little bit of a, a false increase. You would say, man, that's over 150% increase from 375 to 627. But again, the baseline reading is after finishing the pulse psychotherapy, it was 515 nanograms per deciliter. So let's just say, let's forego the results during the fasting mimicking diet. Because again, low calories is uh, very deleterious for your overall total testosterone concentrations. And my sexual hormone globulin ended up at like 112, 120 nanomoles per liter. A steep caloric deficit is not too favorable for your sexual hormones when you're not really taking them exogenously. Again, I was not taking any form of ACG, HMG, gonadrelin, kispeptin 10, triptorelin, etc. Clomid monotherapy. This was all done without any exogenous stimulation of the hypothalamic pituitary testes axes besides icing the testicles and making sure I get, you know, plenty of micronutrients which are favorable for testosterone production, like vitamin E, vitamin D3, carnitine, zinc, magnesium, etc., 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 right? And manganese, man, there's so many micronutrients which are uh, contributing to testicular function, testosterone production, and semen quality. I'll list them on the screen so you guys can uh, see which are uh, beneficial, and I was taking them the entire way through. Now, testosterone as of last weekend, 627.39 nanograms per deciliter, and I'm back up to 95 kilos, baby. I gained 10 kilos. It's all muscle memory. <laughs> it's not like icing the testicles gave me 10 kilos of muscle mass. That's all muscle memory because, yeah. I used to be 115 kgs, and now I'm only 95. But I'm happy at 95 kilos, considering that my testosterone increased. And, well, I'm, I'm basically drug-free, right? Two units of growth hormone, does it count? Can't say that I'm drug-free, but I'm uh, anabolic androgenic steroids-free, and I'm solely relying on my endogenous testosterone production, which came up from baseline, what is it? A little bit over 20%. I'd say that's very noticeable that's a good success and let's have a look at the progression of my estradiol concentrations a few weeks after finishing the post cycle therapy when my testosterone was 515 nanograms per deciliter serum estradiol was somehow undetectable which i think was a fluke i contacted the labs to confirm they said it was a correct reading was below 10 picograms per milliliter but my libido was still there so i honestly think that was a false reading Four weeks into the fasting mimicking diet, my serum estradiol was 21.4 picograms per milliliter, I believe. Then I started icing my testicles. Testosterone increased marginally to, from 375 to 388 nanograms per deciliter. But estradiol came up from 21 to 29 picograms per milliliter. So I was a little bit worried, but again, libido increased, so I didn't really mind. And again, 500 calories per day. You know, how much libido do you expect uh, you know, in that situation? Now, five weeks after getting a 29 picograms per milliliter on my serum estradiol, it has increased to 32.4 picograms per milliliter. So again, it's not much of a change, considering that my total testosterone increased significantly over the last few weeks, comparing the end of the fasting mimicking diet to now. My estradiol didn't come up much, but my testosterone certainly did. And I honestly think some of these fluctuations are because I was still running 100 milligrams of zinc picolinate, which zinc might act as an aromatized inhibitor or lowers the conversion of testosterone into estradiol to a certain extent. So I'll lower the zinc from 100 milligrams to 25 milligrams zinc picolinate supplementary on, on top of the 10 to 15 milligrams of zinc I get from my diet. So I get a little bit over the uh, daily recommended intake values 
But still, you know, I like a little bit additional zinc because zinc is used in so many processes, including the immune system and gene transcription. And yeah, at this point in time, I think we can all use a little bit of an immune system boost. And since I'm getting back into bodybuilding and slowly putting on uh, muscle tissue, I need a little bit of support regarding gene transcription as well. So I'll stay, still stay on top of my zinc, but I'll lower it a little bit to see if my estradiol will come up over the next four weeks, eight weeks or so. Again, I won't be using any aromatized inhibitors, any dynomethane or calcium deglucurate, or anything else that could potentially lower uh, aromatization. No nicotine, for example. Right? There's many other compounds out there that could have a positive or negative effect on aromatization, depending on how you look at it. But I will try to you know, lower or exclude all the compounds which are known to have a dramatic effect on lowering serum estradiol concentrations. Now you can see that my follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone came down a little bit compared to five weeks ago at the end of the fasting mimicking diet. Again, it's always a pulsatile fashion, so it's a moment in time. Keep in mind that all these readings, just as a reminder, all these readings were performed around 8 to 8.30 in the morning when testosterone concentrations are generally their highest. And the longer you wait, the longer you progress throughout the day, the lower serum testosterone concentrations are going to be. So again, I wanted to get a fair assessment and not go 7 o'clock in the morning one day and then 11 o'clock in the afternoon another day. These were all taken between 8 to 8.30 in the morning. I like my consistency, guys. I have a very busy schedule. So, you know, I wake up, drink a liter or one and a half liters of water and go do my blood work. And in those cases, testosterone levels are, uh, yeah, pretty substantial. Now, for 37-year-olds, I, I can't say that this testosterone is substantial. I've seen a lot of far better t total testosterone concentrations on some of my clients that are still drug-free. But in my case, considering I was taking anabolics for, man, almost 10 years, and, and a large portion of that was blasting and cruising. So after my third PCT, and incorporating the icing the testicles 20 minutes, three times per day. Testosterone is pretty good. And luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are a little bit on the low side, but they're within the reference range. And again, it's just a moment in time. So maybe next time I do my blood work, estradiol and total testosterone is a little bit lower and luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are a little bit higher. Either way, I feel, feel really good. Libido is, yeah. It's very nice, guys. It um, could always be better, but it is very good. Now, my sexual hormone globulin came down from, let's say, 120, 112 nanomoles per liter at the at points during the fasting mimicking diet to 54 nanomoles per liter. I was running 3 milligrams of boron twice per day, so that reduced it slightly, even though my estradiol came up a little bit. But again, you know, being in a caloric surplus... And having a stable thyroid levels have, has an effect on your sexual binding globulin levels as well. I don't think I'll continue with the boron. I doubt it can suppress it any further. I think this is where my sexual binding globulin is going to be. I'll do another blood work about four weeks from now or maybe seven weeks from now when I finish the icing the testicles experiment. So when I look at these readings, um, yeah, I would say my HPTA is doing pretty well and i'm able to recruit all of this testosterone into muscle tissue considering i gained 10 kilos since finishing the fasting mimicking diet and i'm about and it really depends on the exercise but i would say i'm at about between 50 to 80 percent of my max strength when i was uh, obviously on anabolics so depending on the exercise between 50 to 80 percent i think i can get most of the exercises up to Let's say about a 75%, maybe even 80%, but I would have to be in a steep caloric surplus and keep that going um, to the point I'm going to risk getting fat. And I certainly got a little bit fatter in the meantime since finishing the fasting mimicking diet. So I'll overlay the pictures for the guys who are still with me and want to watch this video to the end. Because let's be honest, you came here for the icing the testicles experiment. And those were the before, during and after results. Now, on the left is me after finishing the fasting mimicking diet at 85.5 kgs. And on the right is me last weekend 
at 94.8 kilograms. Again, this is on a Sunday morning where I'm usually my lightest because I eat healthy and clean, quote unquote, clean during the week. And then Sunday I uh, yeah, completely let go and just eat what I see, which is usually sandwiches, hamburgers or sushi. It's still reasonably clean, but I might fill that off or top that off with an ice cream and a couple cookies. So this is in the morning, both on a Sunday morning when I'm usually my most depleted at the end of the week. 85 and a half to 94 points, I think it was 8, 94.8 kilograms. So that's almost 10 kgs extra. Now that's certainly not all muscle tissue, that's some intestinal mass, some water retention, obviously. I think I gained a little bit of fat, but I also gained a decent amount of muscle back. And again, that's intramuscular glycogen stores and mineral retention, nitrogen retention, and just lactic acid buildup and inflammation from training uh, two or close to failure. I've been training with like three reps in reserve and then two reps in reserve. And I, and I would just go to failure. Uh, yeah, F a failure comparative of where I was when I was drug free previously at the age of 26. Actually, I am stronger though. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly uh, quite significantly stronger than when I was 26 at the peak of my uh, close to natural potential. Again, you know, I've been cheating in the meantime with anabolics, right? So a little bit of additional strength is to be expected. So overall, everything increased. My waist circumference increased. My overall muscularity increased. Water retention increased. And uh, body fat increased a little bit as well. It's a, it's a bit difficult to me measure, but I would say that I gained a little bit of body fat. I honestly don't mind. Again, I'm uh, feeling great. And a little bit of padding, a little bit of a dad bot. It is what it is. You know, at one point I'll be able to diet that off. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried. So, front double bicep, noticeable difference. Abs and thighs, not too much of a noticeable difference besides that my waist is a little bit less streamlined than it was before. But my lats did gain a you know, decent amount of exercise. So, we're all good there. Again, you see in the quads that I was very depleted after the fasting mimicking diet. You know, minimal water retention. The rest is just fat. And now, um, you know, my, my quads obviously got a little bit thicker and denser, but there's also clearly more water retention, as you can see from the difference in the separation in the quads. Back double bicep, quite a dramatic change. I feel that my back double bicep actually look like a back double bicep now. And uh, not, um, yeah, like a kid who wants to join, uh, you know, the rest of the adults in their back double biceps. Uh, yeah, that's how, that's how I felt. You know, we're very critical of ourselves, right? When I took these pictures... After the fasting mimicking diet, uh, I was not happy, um, but I'm a little bit happier than I used to be, judging by these before and after pictures. Glutes still didn't improve much. Um, yeah, I, I probably need some anabolics to get my glutes back up to where they used to be before, even though my you know, leg training intensity has improved significantly it's over the last five weeks. Uh, my glute mass has not returned. And when we look at the side chest poses, I would say it's pretty comparable, uh, maybe a little bit extra thickness. Uh, I'm being very generous with myself because I'm, you know, not posing the same. So I would say a little bit more thickness in the quads, maybe a little bit in the chest. But again, the posing is not identical. Um, so it's, it's a little bit hard to draw a conclusion from these uh, side chest poses. But overall, I gained almost 10 kilos of weight. Libido improved, my overall sense of well-being improved, uh, my energy levels certainly improved, but it's also partially from increasing the calories again. Do you know what also improved? Testicle volume. And it's, yeah, let, let's get into that because it's very difficult to measure testicular volume at home because normally you would uh, do a measuring tape around the testicles and, you know, do uh, the width, the height and the diameter, right? It's a little bit cumbersome and almost impossible to do at home you would need some sort of medical equipment to really uh, assist it accurately so what i've been doing is pretty straightforward you get a measuring cup fill it to the brim with water and then see how much water you can displace by uh, teabagging or squatting down or whatever you want to call it squatting down teabagging into the measuring cup and see how much water i was able to displace so before icing the testicles, I was able to displace about 60 milliliters of water. 
Again, this is taken over three or four different measuring points just to get an average. Again, I'm thorough with all of my measurements, as you guys can see from the countless uh, blood work results that I uh, am able to display for you guys. So four, three or four different measuring points, an average of 60 milliliters of water displacement uh, by teabagging a measuring cup. Seven weeks after I seen the testicles, I was able to displace 68 milliliters of water on average. So that's almost 10% increase. It's quite noticeable. So, you know, judging by this very um, dubious <laughs> measuring method, and again, there's a lot of room for error here because uh, room temperature and the, uh, you know, time of the day and the proportion, time between ejaculations and all that kind of stuff, I'm sure that all contributes and factors into the results. Still, it's a three or four measuring average, so 60 milliliter displacement to 68 milliliter displacement. Let's say it's a 10% increase in testicular volume. Semen volume I didn't measure. Um, I'll leave that up for the semen analysis. I don't, yeah, no. Although I'm not going to do that at home. So we'll wait until I have a semen analysis result and then uh, see if semen volume increased a little bit as well. And during the entire time, I would have been running whatever has a positive contribution to semen volume as well. So that's the soy lecithin and the carnitine and everything else that I mentioned in that video. You can watch that here besides the HMG and the ACG. But every supplement known to man that is known to increase semen volume, yeah, I've been running it. And I will continue to run those supplements until I do another semen analysis a couple of weeks from now. And then see if icing the testicles and the supplements associated with semen volume can raise my semen volume even further. That would be sweet, right? Then testosterone came up with, let's say, 20% from baseline in a comparable caloric surplus. 515 to 327 nanograms per deciliter. Testicular volume came up with approximately 10% or a little bit more. Again, a little bit of an amateur measuring point, but hey, it's uh, the best I can do during these times. And then hopefully semen volume can increase with what? Well, anything is a bonus, right? 10%, maybe 25%, 50%. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, I can say from now that it's, yeah pretty awesome so <laughs> we'll get the measuring uh, before and after a couple of weeks from now and before we wrap up this video i just want to finish with a couple of blood work markers that changed after reintroducing protein and going back to the gym after the fasting mimicking diet my serum creatinine was 0 0.97 milligrams per deciliter and now five weeks back into the gym training uh, yeah closer and closer to failure but not beyond failure creatinine came up to 1.07 milligrams per deciliter. So it doesn't sound like much, but it's almost a 10% increase already. And I'm sure that will keep going up and up and up and up and up as I increase my food intake and increase my training intensity. And even though I don't plan to really train to failure or past failure and do force reps and you know drop sets and all that kind of stuff, um, I'm sure slowly and steadily the creatinine will start to creep back up. And so will my creatine phosphate kinase, which are all metabolic byproducts of training right the creatinine is a direct metabolic byproduct of the energy production in the mitochondria and the creatine phosphokinase is an enzyme which contributes to energy production in the mitochondria and when you train to failure or close to failure your skeletal muscle damage and creatine phosphate kinase is able to exit skeletal muscle and leak into the bloodstream where you're able to diagnose the concentrations with blood work so creatine phosphokinase went up from 350 units per liter to 800 units per liter. Now, the reason why I was still not within the reference range, during the fasting mimicking diet, I was running a little bit of clenbuterol to stimulate fat loss. Again, I've discontinued the clenbuterol in the GW1516 and the SR9009 and the liraglutide. The only performance enhancing drug I've been running for the last five weeks is two units of growth hormone per day. Still, creatine phosphate kinase went up from 350 units per liter to 800 units per liter. I'm going to write that off as training intensity. And my liver enzymes came back up, even though I took less performance enhancing drugs and less stuff that could pass through my liver and raise liver enzymes in a negative sense. But by reintroducing the training, 
my liver enzymes increased from about 10 to 20 units per liter to 25 to 30 units per liter. So that's noticeable, 150% increase just by going back to the gym and training, you know, with decent intensity, decently heavy weights, but not anywhere close to absolute failure. So I'm really wondering um, if those are going to increase, increase, increase again as my uh, training intensity increases over the next couple of weeks. I will do my absolute 100% best to keep those liver enzymes within the reference range, but AST is already close to the top of the reference range, being 5 to 34 units per liter, and I'm at 31 units per liter. And honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if I end up at 40, 45, 50 units per liter again. I will say that I did discontinue a lot of the supplements I was taking during the time I was resolving the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So I stopped taking the Tutka because I ran out. I stopped taking the Utka because it ran out. I reduced my vitamin E from 800 IUs to 400 IUs. Um, I'm still on Silymarin. I'm almost close to the bottle, so I'm still running uh, Silymarin. What is it? 600 milligrams per day. But most of the stuff I'm slowly phasing out. And I replaced the choline and inositol supplements with soy lecithin, which contains phosphatidylcholine. Um, to a much lower amount that the choline and inositol supplements do. But again, my non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is resolved. And with the eggs that I'm eating and the phosphatidylcholine that the soy lecithin contains, I'm still getting about 3,000, 3,500 milligrams of choline on a daily basis. So I honestly think that this increase in liver enzymes is purely due to increased training intensity and I'll keep my close eye on it and, and, of course, be proactive in, you know, the supplementation and, and the practices that are required for optimal liver health. We'll do a separate video um, in the next couple of days about liver health and how to sustain that while you're running uh, oral anabolic steroids or selective androgen receptor modulators. So I'll do my absolute best to keep that as uh, favorable as possible, but I might have to reintroduce the Tutka at a certain point just to improve bile acid flow and excretion because one thing that i did notice is that during the fasting mimicking diet when i was running all these uh, liver su supplements and liver support stack to resolve the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is that i had no bloating no gas no no digestive issues and after taking the tutka and the atka out i get a little bit of gas sometimes because again i'm still eating a decent amount of vegetables because I want to promote bile acid excretion by offering a decent amount of fiber on a daily basis to um, you know bind up the bile acids and whatever toxins are excreted. So my vegetable intake hasn't changed. Of course, I've increased my uh, protein intake and my fat intake, but I removed the tutka and now I feel a little bit, you know, sometimes a little bit backed up, a little bit constipated. So I'm probably going to add the tutka back in as a maintenance dose of 500 milligrams per day. And then hopefully uh, the flatulence and passing stool will be a little bit easier. And, you know, fingers crossed, double fingers crossed that it's able to keep my liver enzymes uh, favorable or at least prevent them from increasing any further. And I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. For the guys that are interested in uh, icing the testicles, you have my blessing. Just make sure... You don't put the ice pack directly on top of your testicles. Yeah, no direct contact. Um, wrap it in a towel. So you're basically doing a little bit of a heat transfer through the air. And do that for 20 minutes, three times per day. Maybe 30 minutes. Again, I forgot that there was an ice pack present a couple times. And it was there for like 30 minutes, 35 minutes. No adverse effects. Um, a little bit of a regression or... Uh, in, how do you say this? Internalization. Um, retraction, that's probably the word, retraction, <laughs> a little bit of retraction after forgetting to remove the ice pack, uh, but nothing that, um, you know, 20 minutes of uh, relaxation uh, doesn't resolve. Was it beneficial? Yes, highly, based on my blood work and some of the blood work that I've seen. I feel that it's beneficial for everybody that's not on anabolic androgenic steroids or SARMs. Again, if your HPTA is still functioning, and you're looking for ways to improve total testosterone concentrations and perhaps semen volume and semen quality, it seems to be a very promising way to go. And I'll leave you guys with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, 
You can find the ebooks on my website, vigorousteve.com slash shop. If you're looking for personalized advice, you can find the rates to my services in the services section. Contact me directly if you're interested or follow me on Instagram at vigorousteve. I saluted you already, but I'll salute you again. Thank you guys so much for watching. Vigorous crew. I'll give you guys a front double bicep. Oh, that's that's cheating, right? That's uh, Instagram cheating. So we're we're here right now. It doesn't really translate to the before and after pictures. Um, but every time I go to the gym, or at least when they were open, every time I go to the gym, people uh, look at me just like the last off season. And I, are you bigger than yesterday? You know, like the last off season, every day, same guys would ask, "Dude, you, you're bigger than yesterday." And then the next day, "Bro, you're bigger than yesterday." So that was occurring again, and now. People are starting to stare at me again. Social anxiety is uh, returning slightly. Uh, yeah, we'll take the good with the bad, right? But at least at 95 kilos with 630, 627 nanograms per deciliter, feeling pretty good. See you guys in the next video.